Hello everyone. Uh, till now we have discussed about make an input or buy an input uh, using the market and the vertical integration versus market where the buyers has uh, uh, arm's length relationship with the suppliers. Now we will discuss about two more important uh, alternatives under make versus buy a continuum. Uh, there are several uh, alternatives uh, ways in which uh, the exchange can be you know organized in this section uh, we discuss uh, two important uh, alternatives that is a tapered integration where a firm both makes and buys a given input and a collaborative relationship which could be a formal contractual relation or a long term informal relationship based on trust in some cases it can lead to alliances or joint ventures so what is this uh, taper the integration tapered integration uh, represents a mixture of uh, market and vertical integration a firm uh, makes part of requirement in house and procures the rest from the market Firms like uh, Pizza Corner and uh, Madura Garments fall in this category uh, where they own small retail outlets and uh, depend on franchisee or other models uh, for the uh, rest of their sales. Uh, keeping part of the manufacturing in house allows firms to have a better understanding of uh, industry cost structure and this also helps them in negotiating better deals with suppliers uh, firms are able to keep uh, the keep up the pressure on their uh, internal supply group to innovate and work on cost reduction by showing them benchmark numbers from markets firm can also keep the pressure on the on the suppliers by saying that if they do not improve the complete manufacturing will be shifted in house as they have the capability for it as this helps avoid a potential hold up situation the firm is less uh, uh, vulnerable on this front though at first glance it looks like uh, as if tapered integration allows a firms to be the uh, to be the best of both worlds if not managed properly the firm might end up getting the worst of both the worlds by distributing production between internal and external supply groups a, a company or a firm may not have economies of uh, scale at both places and uh, the coordination and monitoring activities might increase cost uh, ex you know significantly collaborative relationship uh, in a collaborative relationship, the supplier is uh, an extension of the firm. The firm treats its uh, suppliers as strategic partners and usually a supplier is assured of business for a reasonably long period of time. The firm does not indulge in competitive bidding every year and does not uh, change its uh, supplier to get the small piece of reduction offered by the uh, competing supplier information is shared freely across firms and the supplier is willing to invest in relationship specific assets usually the supplier gets involved early at the product design stage and uh, price paid to the supplier is based on the actual costs incurred one major concern in all collaborative relationships is ensuring that the supplier keeps working on innovations just like the internal suppliers the partner in a collaborative relationship is uh, assured of business and this may result in uh, complacency on the part of the supplier. Firms should periodically benchmark the partner's cost with the market so as to ensure that the supplier remain competitive. Uh, uh, for example, uh, Delmark benchmarks all its uh, partners on cost 
and uh, technology leadership. Only if the supplier maintains leadership on both of these fronts, uh, uh, Dell continue with the same, uh, you know, uh, continue with the same partner. Of, you know, even firms like uh, Toyota uh, buy 80% of the uh, required components from the market, but Toyota and Japanese uh, and other Japanese, uh, you know, firms uh, do not keep their suppliers at an arm's length and uh, do work, do not work with the uh, contractual relationship. Japanese manufacturers uh, work with a network of suppliers with whom they maintain close long term relationships. Japanese companies have subcontractor networks called uh, KRS2. This network involves vendors, bankers, and uh, distributors. Uh, firms within a KRS2 are linked by informal personal relationships as they share long term relationships. They avoid uh, most of the problems associated with the market exchange relationships and are willing to invest in uh, higher relationship specific assets and do not worry about information asymmetry and uh, hold uh, hold up problems. This uh, allows each of each firm within the Kairos to, to focus on its core competence and uh, all get the necessary economies of uh, scale. Uh, however, uh, they are assured of market. Uh, they may also suffer from agency problem discussed uh, in, uh, in uh, you know, vertical integration. American and European auto makers have realized uh, the importance of collaborative relationship and have been uh, progressing in that direction over the past uh, two decades without creating various to like structure. To get similar benefits out of collaborative partnerships, Western companies have explored strategic alliances and joint ventures. Sourcing uh, strategy uh, may be, you know, portfolio approach. Portfolio approach uh, is uh, one of the uh, very known approaches uh, when it comes to sourcing strategy. So this uh, portfolio approach, uh, you know, using this uh, approach, the firms buy a large number of uh, components and services, and of course, not all of them should be handled in the same way. The popular portfolio approach uh, developed by Kraljik uh, classifies items based on the importance of the uh, item in terms of value of purchase, uh, that is high versus low and uh, associated supply risk in the supply market. Supply risk captures two dimensions, number of suppliers in the market and uh, uh, the demand supply gap in the supply market. If an item has very few suppliers who have a monopoly in the market and the supply is less than the demand, the buyer faces a significant supply risk. In supply markets where there are large number of players, and there is a surplus capacity in the market, the item bought will be classified as low supply risk category items. Packaging materials and uh, transport services market come in this uh, category and uh, represent low risk items. Uh, diesel engine, diesel fuel system and uh, proprietary technology items have a few suppliers. So they represent a high risk supply category. For example, Bosch, uh, Bosch has a market share of 81% in the fuel injection equipment uh, market. So obviously it comes under high risk category. Similarly, oil and steel in early parts of 21st century represented the uh, high risk category because uh, demand outstripped the supply. There was a strong demand for steel uh, and uh, fuel in India and China and as a result demand outstripped the supply. Because of this uh, supply uncertainty created by uh, disturbance in uh, Iraq, the supply risk for oil increased significantly after uh, the intervention by the United States of America in Iraq. Classifying item on their purchasing value is a, is a straightforward issue because it just needs internal data and growth projections at the at the company level supply risk on the other hand represents a more sophisticated analysis because 
the focus is on the supply markets and in in case of uh, many commodities the supply markets are global in nature so firms should either develop uh, adequate capabilities in this area or should make uh, should take help from experts for carrying out uh, these exercises Uh, firms buy a large number of uh, components and services and of course not all of them should be handled in the same way uh, the popular uh, the portfolio approach uh, developed by uh, Cradley uh, classifies the item based on uh, importance of item in terms of value and uh, associated supply risk in supply market like uh, everything else uh, purchasing expenditure uh, per item also follow 80 to 20 rule that is uh, uh, 20 percent of the items represents so here uh, 80 percent of the value of the purchase similarly the bargaining power of the buyers and suppliers depends on the demand uh, supply conditions in the supply market and hence uh, are the different uh, they are all different for different items uh, typically uh, managers end up spending equal amount of time and effort on all items and all suppliers because of each supplier has to go to supplier certification if there are large number of items and distinct components and the purchasing manager may not be focusing on items uh, where opportunity may be high or supply risk is uh, very significant to understand uh, this issue better uh, we can uh, use this uh, you can see a figure which has aggregated data from the portfolio analysis carried out by a couple of uh, Indian firms. Uh, as seen in the figure, 4 to 10 percent of the parts accounted for about 70 to 80 percent of the purchase value. On supply risk dimensions, 80 to 90 percent of the items represents the low supply risk situations. What is most striking is uh, the low value, low risk quadrant. Item in the quadrant. Uh, account for 80 to 85 percent uh, of the items and 50 to 25 percent of the purchase value the explicit data on purchase orders are not presented in the in this particular study but it is very likely that low value low risk quadrant will account for large number of purchase orders and therefore will take up the bulk of purchasing managers time uh, we obviously uh, need a different uh, sourcing strategy for each of these uh, quadrant so According to this portfolio approach, uh, we have four different product quadrants, uh, namely uh, routine products, leverage products, strategic products, and uh, bottleneck products. Uh, we take each uh, category and uh, discuss uh, the sourcing strategy. So, in case of uh, routine products, the, the, actually this quadrant represents a significant opportunity. The focus is on reducing the number of uh, parts and the number of suppliers. The aim is to reduce administrative and uh, logistics complexity. The time saved here is used to focus on strategic suppliers and uh, bottleneck suppliers. The focus is on moving to system buying rather than uh, component buying. A uh, large number of uh, items and suppliers come in this uh, quarter. Uh, which represents a non-critical low valued supply unfortunately uh, managers end up spending much energy in this quarter uh, ideally the purchasing department should not waste of its energy uh, on small items rather it should aggregate uh, components into system and uh, start sourcing the system the issue is uh, this issue is uh, discussed uh, in uh, uh, can be uh, discussed in detail uh, if time permits.
then uh, leverage products this this quadrant uh, consists of uh, high value uh, standard products uh, the items uh, provided these items provide an opportunity for uh, leveraging buying power in uh, low risk uh, low supply risk situations in these uh, supply markets uh, there are large number of suppliers and uh, switching costs are very low so uh, firms should be aggressive in their attempts to encourage competitive bidding in order to leverage uh, their position most of the uh, benefits obtained by firms in uh, reverse auctions have been uh, taken in this uh, category uh, in case of strategic products uh, the, actually this is a quadrant which represents high value products with uh, high supply risks as uh, shown in this uh, figure this quadrant usually accounts for less than 5% of the item and uh, for almost 40% of the purchase value item in this uh, quadrant are treated as a strategic items and a firm must work towards establishing collaborative long term relationship with uh, suppliers in this quadrant and uh, firms must create opportunities for mutual cost reduction by working together on all aspects including product design uh, etc uh, because the fewer parts uh, because of this fewer parts and suppliers are involved uh, the firms can invest in building collaborative relationships the top management of the company should get uh, actively involved in uh, uh, devising a strategy for this category of uh, products. Uh, the last one is uh, bottleneck uh, products. This are, these items represents a relatively low value but uh, firm uh, vulnerable on this front uh, because of uh, supply risk inherent in this market. Since uh, a firm likely to be buying relatively smaller value, it's, it's also unlikely to have much uh, you know, clout with suppliers. Uh, here the focus is on uh, securing supply and uh, firm should actively keep looking at alternative sources of supply. If possible, uh, the firm should also look at substitutes that are from uh, low risk supply markets. For example, in the diesel fuel system, there may not be too many suppliers of the required capability and uh, competence. A firm might uh, try and develop a better understanding of suppliers uh, priorities and uh, their planning system so that uh, it can align its uh, buying plan with the suppliers operating plans uh, for example some uh, steel producers produce uh, certain grades of steel only once in a year if the if an interested firm knew of their internal process it might be a, a, in a better position to obtain reliable supply if required, the firm should also be willing to pay a premium for a reliable source of uh, supply. Uh, reconfiguration of uh, the supply base. Most uh, Indian companies work with a large number of uh, vendors. In the, in the past, a number of items were reserved for small scale sector and this uh, forced Indian corporations to source material from uh, many small players. Most of the small firms had very little motivation to innovate. Uh, purchasing managers prefer to work with large number of uh, suppliers so that uh, uh, as a buyer, the firm could play one supplier against another uh, at the bid, bid, uh, you know, bidding stage. If we take the example of uh, uh, freight, uh, typical Indian firm work with large number of uh, transporters, Toyota Kiloskar has uh, just uh, one strategic supplier of uh, logistic service with whom it has a collaborative relationship. Other firms may not uh, want to go all the way to single sourcing, but uh, they have to work on uh, uh, configuring their supply base so as to reduce the number of uh, suppliers. Uh, this uh, reconfiguration uh, involves uh, two different ideas. Uh, number one, it is uh, move to system buying and uh, second one is reduce the number of uh, suppliers per item uh, or system. Uh, as uh, you know, discussed earlier, uh, purchase uh, portfolio analysis 
uh, actually reveals that 80% uh, of the items uh, constitute 20% of the uh, value. Rather than buying individual components, firms should buy system and modules. Uh, this is uh, you know, illustrated with example you know, from automobile industry. So in the figure you can see uh, a, a, a firm like General Motor used to buy a seat parts from uh, uh, 25 odd suppliers while a Japanese firm like uh, Nissan buy the complete seat from a supplier. This does not mean that uh, supplier manufactured all the 25 components of the seat. It just means that uh, supplier is first tire supplier who is in turn buys subsystem from the second tire companies who in turn depends on the third tire companies. The difference between General Motors and uh, Nissan's approach is, uh, is can be seen through this uh, chart. Uh, uh, it is not difficult to appreciate the difference between the coordination costs involved in uh, procuring car seats at uh, General Motor and uh, Nissan. Uh, auto assemblers globally have minimized their coordination cost by moving to system of buying which requires a pyramid shaped supply structure. Uh, auto assemblers work closely with the tire one suppliers who are responsible for the design and delivery of uh, complete modules like seats, doors and uh, dashboards. Uh, these system suppliers buy their own subsystem from uh, tire two suppliers uh, who in turn buy individual items from tire three uh, suppliers. By working only with uh, uh, tire one suppliers a firm cannot uh, only reduce the coordination cost but also work on various uh, initiatives to improve material and uh, information flow across the chain. Supplier uh, selection and auction, uh, supplier selection based on auctions and uh, negotiations sometimes be become uh, uh, you know, crucial. Uh, before uh, you know, selecting suppliers, a firm must decide whether to use uh, single sourcing or multiple suppliers. A single sourcing guarantees the supplier sufficient uh, business when the supplier must make a significant buyer specific investment. Uh, while having multiple source uh, ensures a degree of uh, competition and also lower uh, risk by providing a backup. Uh, should a source fail to deliver. The selection of supplier uh, is uh, done using a variety of mechanism including uh, offline uh, competitive bids, reverse auctions or direct negotiations. No matter what mechanism is used, uh, supplier uh, selection should be based on the total cost of using supplier and not uh, just uh, the purchase price. In general, auctions are the best used when uh, uh, quantifiable acquisition cost is the primary component of total cost. If uh, ownership or post ownership costs are significant, direct negotiations often lead to the best outcome. In many supply chain settings, a buyer uh, looks to outsource a supply chain function such as uh, production or transportation. Potential suppliers are first qualified and uh, then allowed to bid on how much they would charge to perform the function. When conducting an auction based uh, primarily on unit price, it is uh, thus important for the buyers to specify performance expectation along uh, all dimensions other than uh, price. Uh, from the buyer's perspective, uh, the purpose of an auction is to get bidders to reveal their underlying cost structure so the buyers can select uh, the supplier with the lowest costs. A significant factor that uh, must be accounted for uh, when designing an auction uh, is the possibility uh, of collusion among uh, bidders sometimes. Second price auctions are particularly uh, vulnerable to collusion. Uh, like uh, contract is assigned to the lowest bidder but the but at the price quoted by the second the lowest bidder uh, so there are basic uh, you know, principles of uh, negotiation so firms uh, enter into negotiation 
both for supplier selection and to set the terms of a contract uh, with an existing supplier. Negotiation is likely to result in a positive outcome only if the value uh, the buyer places on the outsourcing, uh, the supply chain functions to supplier is at least as large as the value of supplier places on performing the function for buyers. The difference between a value of the buyer and seller is referred to as bargaining surplus. Uh, a good estimate of bargaining surplus improves the chance of a successful outcome. Suppliers of uh, Toyota have, uh, have often mentioned that Toyota now uh, our costs better than we do. Toyota knows our costs better than we do, which leads to better negotiations. The key to successful negotiation is uh, to make it a win-win outcome uh, that grows the surplus. It is impossible to obtain a win-win outcome if the two parties are negotiating on a single dimension such as price. To create a win-win negotiation, the two parties must identify more than one issue to negotiate. Identifying multiple issues allows the opportunity to expand the, you know, uh, if the two parties have different uh, preferences. This is uh, uh, often easier than it seems in a supply chain setting, especially if both parties focus on the total cost of uh, ownership. So how can we create a world-class supply base? Uh, so competitive edge is something all companies strive for as a part of uh, building their so-called world-class supply chain. From a high level uh, definition, this means having effective interdependent relationships between people, process and technology and uh, from our suppliers to our customers such that we are enabled to increase market value and drive down end-to-end -end supply chain costs. So cost elements of efforts in getting to that uh, end state includes collaborative long-term relationship built on respect and trust, effective demand signals that drives sourcing and manufacturing and enable volume adjustments as needed, operations and logistics significant uh, sorry, uh, alignment with the capacity managed and uh, leveled production schedules. Ability to manage mixed loads with on time or in full delivery coming into or going out of the organization. Ongoing collaborative operations and product delivery improvement with cost reduction across the end to end chain. So to becoming a world class requires uh, uh, let us focus on operational excellence and uh, use all means at our disposal to ensure increased visibility across supply chain, improved control and decision making, improved product availability, improved alignment between organization and targets, increased data accuracy and uh, user confidence, increased system performance, standardizing and uh, harmonizing people, process and technology. Put all this together uh, and the value opportunity, uh, the value opportunities to business become uh, real. So we can reduce the inventory between 15 to 30 percent, uh, 15 percent to and 30 percent. Increase inventory turns by as much as uh, less than 17.5 percent, uh, as much as more than 17.5 percent, and improved supply chain service levels by more than 20 percent. Increased uh, process efficiency by uh, more than 20 percent. So this is one of the case study uh, being done by HCL uh, Exxon uh, who has helped an overgrowing list of claims transform in their supply chain and this is the outcome of this particular uh, you know uh, uh, company HCL Exxon. Uh, for a global storage networking manufacturer we achieved an 85% uh, improvement in operating cycle time by increasing supply chain efficiency. This, this is what the uh, achievements done by HCL Exxon company uh, after having a, a, a effective supply chain in place. Uh, for a leading biotechnology company, we cut the time required for demand forecasting by 50%. For a global life science company, we delivered an organization-wide 360-degree view of the customer to support 
its 1,200 member sales force. For a leading US retailers, we enabled a 78% increase in revenue which they achieved within four months of its Oracle implementation. For one of the European largest soft drink companies, we delivered 49 million US dollars in cashable benefits by transforming its supply chain. For the world leader in information storage system, we reduced order to schedule cycle times from days to minutes by improving information exchange between warehouse and the plant. For the largest local authority in European public sector, we created more than 400 million pounds in savings over three years with up to uh, 541 million uh, pounds project by overhauling uh, the agency's operation. So these are the achievements by Excel Exxon uh, you know, company. Uh, supplier development. Supplier development describes a structured program to improve the capabilities of the supplier. Buyers may seek to improve capability by sharing ideas with their suppliers, by uh, seconding staff, by advertising funds for investment or by working collaboratively to join uh, or jointly uh, develop new processes. Supplier development is resource intensive and usually focuses on key long term suppliers with whom cooperation is uh, uh, appropriate. The logic is that uh, uh, through developing the supplier's capability, both parties will share in benefits of better performance, better quality, shorter cycle times and uh, lower uh, encourage collaboration between individual suppliers, drive innovation, create stronger long term supplier uh, relationships resolve performance and quality issues, enhanced uh, customer satisfaction. Worldwide sourcing. This is also termed as global sourcing. Uh, it is the process of sourcing goods and services from the international market across uh, geopolitical boundaries. Uh, it aims to exploit global efficiencies such as the lower cost, skilled labor, cheaper raw materials and other economics uh, economic factors uh, like uh, tax breaks and uh, low trade tariffs. Uh, examples are call centers in India, clothing and shoe manufacture uh, in uh, Ethiopia and uh, Thailand. Uh, some advantages of global sourcing are learning how to do business successfully in a new market, finding uh, and developing alternate supplier sources to reduce cost and uh, stimulate uh, co com competition. The opportunity exists to locate uh, scarce skills and uh, resources not available or unproductive at uh, home, thereby increasing manufacturing capacity and other technical capabilities. Uh, there are some disadvantages. Monitoring costs go up and uh, there are hidden costs relating to the effort and uh, the time spent uh, learning about uh, different cultures and time zones, especially in the beginning. Uh, there is a exposure to financial, political, legal risks often in emerging economics. Uh, in, the, in the service industries, there is also a real risk in losing a grip on your uh, intellectual uh, property. So this is all about uh, outsourcing and its strategies. Thank you.